Hey guys, welcome to the Octopod. Yes, that's Octopod with two Ds because in life, double Ds makes everything much, much better. I'm Curtis, I'm the loud one, and this is Chris. He is the fat one. Say hello. Hi. A very good hello, a very good hello. Uh, good attempt, good attempt. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the films that we watched throughout the week, which is Hot Tub Time Machine, Kong Skull Island, and The Last Boy Scout. Before we get into that... I would like you guys to ask us questions down below. There's nothing greater than answering the questions you guys give us. Woo! Yay! Give us more questions, goddammit! Please. Ask us anything you want. We will answer Please. it. I don't care what it is. Please. Just do it. Please. Please. I'm begging you your questions. Please. Please. Spare any questions Please. for a poor feeble man. Please, thank you very much. Uh, with that done, we are moving on to the first film. Hot Tub Time Machine! Woo! Woo! Yeehaw! Woohoo! Tell us about it, Chris. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. The interesting about Hot Tub Time Machine was that... It's a hot tub and it's a time machine? No, it's that like, so many people kept like recommending this film. And I kept thinking, like... Really? Like, is it is it actually gonna be that good? Because like, I read the title of it, I'm like, this sounds dumb as shit. That's the problem. Even I thought I, I saw the I saw the poster. I kind of like, I just thought it was gonna be a corny ass film. I'm gonna be like real with you. I thought it was gonna be corny. It wasn't gonna be that good. It was just gonna be like, eh, I'll laugh, but it's kind of mid. You yeah. know, I thought that's the best it would get out of me. But I was pleasantly wrong. I was very wrong, and it made sense why people actually kept recommending this movie. And why it dominated even the Patreon poll. Like, I, it was so one-sided. Yeah. It, I thought there were some great movies on there, but everyone's like, nah, Hot Tub Time Machine. That's it. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. So that's what we got. And you know what? I actually liked the movie a lot. I think it was, like, right up our alley. That was... The, it, it turned out to be exactly our type of humor to laugh at. Especially Lou. My oh, God. God. My God, dude. Um, The guy who plays him, I think his name Rob something. Rob, Rob, Rob Cord, Rob Cord... Cord, Cord Cordry, Cord, Rob Cord. We'll call him Rob Cord. The guy is just like the perfect asshole. I've never seen a man portray an asshole so perfectly in every film he's in. Yeah. He's just, he's just, gen we need an asshole. Get Rob Cord on the film, on the, on the phone. Boom, and there he is. Yeah, like even in Harold and uh, Kumar, it's given Guantanamo Bay, he's so damn funny. He was really funny in that too. And again, he's an asshole. Yep. You know, it's just like, that's just kind of like, that's a shtick. And it works very well for him. You know what? He's literally living the dream. If you think about it, he's paid to be an asshole. Oh. Literally. That's awesome. Right? He's living every person's dream. I want to do that. Where do I sign up to be a professional asshole? I won't even need to act. I could do it. Yeah. No acting involved. I could do it. Easy. All right? I already am one. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> Ask the people who wanted us to watch Kong Skull Island. They'll let you know. <laughs> They'll tell you how much of an asshole I actually am. Yeah, we're going to get there very soon. We'll get there later. We'll get there uh, later. But I, I just kind of like the heartfelt, just like nature of the entire film in a sense. Yeah. Of like the importance of like maintaining your friendships as you get older. I think it's something that some people lose because it's very hard because you all have your own lives. You have your own shit going on. And that's what, They even, like, portray it through there. Everyone has, like... Because, dude, life is... The older you get, the more responsibilities are thrown at you. Yeah. You know? To the yep. point where you... You sometimes get... You go on, like, um... What's it called? Autopilot mode. Right? Mm -hmm. You're taking care of the responsibilities that you have in front of you that you forget about the people outside of that. Yeah. Right? Especially if you have family and whatnot. Oh, that, God. That adds a lot more on top of it. You know, that's a lot... There's more layers in depth there that make it harder to make time for others. But again, it's it's more so that you cannot fall into autopilot. You need to be self-aware that there are... You know, you do have friends and you should make time for them more than anything else. Yeah, you, you should try to make time for them as much as you possibly can. At least maybe even like once a week, plan a day and be like... Or no, even the best you can do is once a month, whatever you can. The bare minimum. But you know what? I find that it's easier today to keep in touch with people, especially... If you guys share the hobby of, like, video games and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like, online, you, you could probably find, like, like, right now, what we do, like, uh, pretty much uh, our friends, like, Brandon and Kyle. That We, we have other friends, like, uh, you know, like, Rory and stuff like that. But Brandon and Kyle are primarily the ones that we uh, we spend the most time with. 
and they make time for us. We play like uh, Baldur's Gate 3 with them and stuff like that. We just find games that are multiplayer and we just play that every now and then. And sometimes we're not consistent with it. We yeah. try to do it a few times a week or sometimes even just once a week. You know, we just we do the best we can to make time for that. And you know what? The fact that we make time is enough more than anything else. Yeah. Because you see yeah. like what happens like specifically with Lou. His life just falls apart and it's just like... He has no one at all well, not that just has that, his back in any shape well, or form. Not just that, but like Adam and Nick were his everything. They were his yeah. world, and they and the two of them didn't realize that they moved on. Mm -hmm. They moved on from um, they moved on from school, and they started pursuing uh, their own lives. Yeah, you know, relationships, a job, and stuff like that. But Lou was absolutely miserable. He wasn't pursuing. He had a job, obviously, but other than that, he wasn't pursuing anything outside of that. He was just He was literally just doing the necessary things to survive. Yeah. That was it, but he would not pursue anything outside of that. No, because all he wanted to do was spend some time with his friends, and that's why he tried to uh, off himself. Yeah. It's just the fact that, you know, he was so upset with life, and he just couldn't deal with it no more. He hated how all of his things, uh, everything was like the outcome of his entire life. Yeah. You know, he never made a good decision. Everything's falling apart. It's just like... He was pretty much hitting his, um, he was pretty much hitting his midlife crisis a little bit earlier. I think they're, they're in their 40s in this film. I think around, I believe. Uh, I believe. I, I, can't, I think, I think it was around the 40s, if I believe. I'll be real with you, dude. Like, with the modern lifespan, that's probably a midlife crisis. Right now, yeah, 80s the new 100, right? So pretty maybe much... Maybe even it, lower. Maybe even lower, depending on how long they make it. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's technically, like, his, well, their midlife crisis, in a sense. You know? Yeah. More so Lou, though. Yeah, he more, really more, has. More, well, well, even Adam. Adam had it pretty rough, too. Yeah, the divorce. Yeah. Was it a divorce or a breakup or a divorce? It was something along those lines, but he was not taking it well. That yeah. was for certain. He wasn't taking it too well. And uh, I keep forgetting Jacob's even there because, like, all he was doing was playing Second Life and he was in prison. <laughs> I love that was it. the funniest thing <laughs> ever. And he's just like, you were in prison yesterday. Why are you still there? He's like, you know, got to do my time and stuff. It's like, bro, why are you playing this shit? <laughs> right? All your... All your, your You're just prison simulator. You're playing prison? Bro, go outside instead. Go to actual prison if you want to do that. You know, there's more going on there than in Second Life prison. I liked how, like, even Adam says, can't you play something with, like, shamans or something, or man? Or orc. Yeah, orc or shamans. I was just like, ah, that, that was a good little, uh... Little not to World of Warcraft. Yeah, I like that. An actual video game, not Second Life. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I tried playing Second Life when I was younger. And Loser I, shit. Oh, hundred percent, dude. I just, I, I didn't. Understand. I was like, all you do is socialize. I do that when I go outside. I don't want to do that online. Screw that. No, I want to kill not shit. That's not a video game. No, I don't want to socialize. That's not fun. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. I want to kill shit and call my teammates ass. Yeah! There's nothing like calling your teammates ass. Or the enemy team assholes. Yeah. That's more up my alley, you know? Yeah, also, like, though, when they go to their, um... These cat... This, like, place that... that when they were young, they like, this was the hottest place ever. Oh, when they go to the cabins? And, and they... it's, like, the sad reality of life. Like, you know, like, as years go by, these places sometimes, they don't... They don't, they don't age the of, well! They don't stand the test of time. No. Like, I know for a fact that, like, if I went back to where I... Where we grew up... Dude, oh. literally there is not a single Guys, thing that is the, the same the last time we visited the area where we grew up in ontario it wasn't good our old home looked like shit like i'm not kidding yep. you whoever like moved in and bought it out or whoever was currently living there was not taking care of it the last time we saw it and that was possibly like a long time ago we that was like five six years no even longer maybe no. a decade ago maybe we, we haven't been to ontario i think now like probably five years six years well we've been to ontario but like we haven't been in that area where we used to live no, in a long time. Never even bothered. Never even bothered because we had one poor experience when we went last there. It was just depressing to look at. You know the home you grew up with. Not and, just the home, the neighborhood shit. Yeah, the, the entirety of the neighborhood was just like the neighborhood you grew up in just turned to shit, and it just yeah. it, it, it didn't look like what it used to. It looked really nice before, and now it just no. Yeah. Did not again. Did not age well, and, and, and that in itself is depressing. Yeah, it, it shows you the the harsh realities of time itself yep. more than anything not only do, there's other instances of that you know the aging of your parents and whatnot if you yep. want to get a little depressed uh, even more <laughs> so you know, that doesn't help either but the seeing old places that you used to love not exist anymore or yeah. look like shit yeah is a terrible feeling so it's like it's weird to say that hot tub time machine is insanely relatable for anybody who's aging 
which we all are, can't stop it. Yeah. When you're not young anymore, watch Hot Tub Time Machine. It becomes very depressing. It, it, it really does, honestly. It, like that, that was the whole time I was like watching the movie, and I just kept thinking about, you know, you know, friendships that are kind of like dwindling away, the things I used to love. Like, wow, it, this kind of sucks, bro. Like, damn. It hits a little too close to home. Yeah. Right? Even for a comedy, like you're laughing, you're having a great time, but then you're, you're kind of seeing the serious undertone of this, and you're just like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. And you know what my favorite thing about the film was? Mm. Is that even when they tried to change uh, history, it would in some way correct itself. They couldn't change the events. I liked that a lot. That was actually super cool. Yeah. Like, Adam just couldn't find it in himself to break up with his girlfriend at the time, and then she just broke up with him. Mm -hmm. It was just like... It was almost like it was was like the universe giving you a sign, like, this was supposed to happen no matter what. Yeah. There's nothing you could do about this event. Yeah. You know, this has to happen. You're not supposed to be... Another thing, I wanted to talk about the characters individually, and since you mentioned Adam, screw it, we're going to go with uh, Adam first. Yeah. Adam's like the classic guy who... uh, well, you, you could see, like, he, he banked everything on that girl in the past. He It seemed like he never let go, even in the future. You yeah. know, he always, like, when he remembered, he's like, oh, she was the one that got away. And when he went back, he realized that she wasn't. She wasn't even no. that great for him. They didn't no. even get along. Whatsoever. They didn't look like they kind of meshed that well together either. No. Like, there was no chemistry. Maybe she was good no, in the bedroom, but other than that. No, but, like, you could tell as well, specifically, is that she didn't seem that into him. No, never did. And he didn't seem as into her as he thought he was. Yeah. Which was interesting, too. Mm-hmm. You know, well, it could be the difference that he's now 40 and she's younger than that. Uh, no, younger. he probably wasn't but at the th- time. But, you know, when you're a young per- person, like, yeah. you're kind of oblivious to the fact that you don't actually get along with a person. You're just happy to have someone. Exactly that. And you're kind of, like, delusional and you overlook the actual, like, jarring things that are, like, so obvious that you're not clicking. You're not mm-hmm. meshing together. Yeah. But, like, it, you saw as he's older, like, and kind of, like, interacting with her, he looks so bored and not interested. Yeah. And it was just, like, uh, you know, you can see it didn't get along at all. Yeah, and then, you know, he meets the other girl there that was more, like, up his alley and stuff yep. like that, that had more personality and kind of mesh. It was better suited for him. Yeah. You know? But it's just interesting because a lot of people do that where they just... They can't let go from a, a a relationship from the past, yeah. You know, and they kind of let it dictate their entire life after that. Yeah, they'll be like, oh man, like they were the ones. Like if they were, you'd be with them still, right? And it's like sometimes you just gotta let go and move on and find it and find someone currently or in the present that is yeah. better. But it's hard to do that when you have that kind of mindset where you're already psyching yourself out that you already met the best. You'll never find another the best kind of thing. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you're psyching yourself out for future relationships. Like, you're screwing yourself over yeah, big time. you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. You know, you can't get into a relationship with the idea that the this one that you had, like, 20, 30 years ago was, like, the one of your your dreams. That's really ridiculous. Yeah, exactly that. And, um, not, uh, I think, like, they, that, that was, like, the main thing for Adam. Like, that was his main kind of, like, story or whatnot or the they yeah. were going for and then with nick it was just like it was more so that he made his wife his life literally nothing wrong with that you know you can enjoy your partner and whatnot but you can't forget about your friends and put everything into your partner you, you not can't, only you that can't do that it's not only just that but it's even the fact that you know like he hyphenated his name and stuff and he just didn't really want to do it and he should have been open about that he should have really st- stood his ground and kind of stand up for himself yeah. you know here's but the, it was just like it looked like he was kind of just letting himself be a doorman to his wife you know he was afraid not to please her yeah you know, you know? he was afraid to say no and then she would like maybe uh i don't know maybe an argument or maybe just like gets upset or something you just don't want to deal with it could have been potentially that you never get a you sadly do not get to see her until the end of the film yeah that's the thing which is very weird so you, you don't, don't really get a lot of information so you on have her. no information on, at the end of the film she looks like she seems like a really nice woman. A very nice woman and stuff like that. Well, that's that's the new future. That's the new future. But there was like a whole like thing about her cheating on him and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that was wild. He mentioned it, but it never went in depth. You yeah. Know, just kind of like briefly mentioned it. And I was just like, oh, okay. And never went any further than that. And he kind of like just forgave oh, her for that. My favorite part is when he called her at nine years old. <laughs> and just like, just talk <laughs> bad shit to her. Yeah. That was one of the absolute best scenes. This I like movie. how it actually traumatized her for like the yeah. next future. Yeah, she's like, oh, honey, remember, you, you remember what happened to me when I was nine years old and the crazy man called <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and talked about me cheating on him. <laughs> that was really funny. That was good. But it was just like, it was interesting. Like he, he literally let himself become the doormat where he, 
I don't, you never get a full picture of whether she cheated or not. Like you don't even. I think she did. She I probably don't know. did because there's a new future and a happier future. I'm I'm going with the assumption that she did, and he was yeah. able to like forgive her for that and something like, bro, you can't do that. You don't forget people who cheat. Mm-mm. No, you no, never do that. no, 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 no. You do no, it. No. They do it once. They're gonna do it again. A hundred percent. Like that's just how it is. You once know? a cheater, always a cheater. They cannot be trusted in no. the slightest. Because they really can't. They. That's a boundary you can't cross in terms of trust. Like right there, no. it's already over. You should never trust them well, again. Well, I think just in general, like that's a, like a level of, to which, like once that line is crossed, there's no going back. No, because a lot of people say, "Oh, I hate." For the people who do cheat, they always say, "Oh, I made a mistake," and it's like, "No, it's, you did not." Here's the thing: in order to cheat on someone, you made multiple mistakes, multiple mistakes that led to this, no. and you knew you what you were no. doing was bad, and you continued down that no. road. Here's the thing: it's you not know? a mistake; you made a decision. No, but you, I'm just saying, you know, it was multiple poor decisions that you kept doing. Yeah, and so it's not one big mistake, one poor decision. It was a multitude of poor decisions that led up to this, and you had. Everything in your power to stop before it happened. Yep. And you kept going down that path. Yep. No sympathy. Screw you. You're a loser. Straight up. That's it. You heard it here first, folks. If you cheat on your partner, you're an absolute loser. You're a piece of shit. That's it. You're a piece of shit. Like, if it's not working, just break up with them and try it with something, something with someone else. Right? Like, just end it. Why don't you just break up with them, hurt them, hurt them the legitimate way instead of hurting them more later on? Yeah. You know? Like, there's no point for that. No. Absolutely. That's just shit. Oh, God, that just, like, ah, fires me up, fires me up. Um, We'll leave Nick out of this. I'm glad that Nick ended up, like, chasing his dreams, finding the passion that he actually loved. Because in, in the in his previous present, he was working a job he absolutely hated. He did yeah, not like it. He was but, not having but fun. But, again, he, he, he focused more on his wife, and he didn't focus on his own goals, his ambitions, and, and his dreams. And, again, and I just, like, again, like, you know, I think centering on that, like, if you've got something in your life you really want to do, and you're, and you're kind of, like, just do it, man. I'm not if your partner is not the, supportive. No, is the one and is really good for you, they would support you. More than anything, they would support you with your goals, your ambitions, your dreams and whatnot. Yep. They would even help you if possible. Yeah. You know? So that alone is also an indicator of whether this person's good for you or not. You should yep. pay attention to that. Never give up yourself for someone else. No. You know, you should never. always have individuality even with a partner. You should still keep your individuality. It's not about like being selfish. It's just about like having things that you love to do and, and you like, and not like throw that away. Yeah, you know, some people get a little too into the relationship that they end up losing themselves along the way. I've seen it a lot growing up, man. It's weird as shit. Yeah, it, and it's sad as hell too. It, it is what it is, and sometimes they never get out of it. They just lose themselves, and you never see them again, kind of thing. Nope. Very unfortunate. Uh, we're going to move on for that. I'm going to quickly touch up on Jacob before we get to any of them uh, before Lou. Jacob just needed to touch grass. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That was, a, that was Dude, the Dude, I, I love the realization that his, his mom was like into drugs and just sleeping around. Whoa. That she, is so She dumb. was wild, man. Oh, my Whoa. God. Whoa. You, oh, dude, that's... Bro, can you imagine finding out your mom was like a freak? Back in the past? Like, yeah, damn. Now, today, it's finding out your mom did OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally Yo, the same it's thing. It's the same shit. Same shit. Oh my god! I mean, to be fair, OnlyFans is worse. Yeah, because it's permanently it's on permanently the there, so you anybody can, can see it. Anybody can find it, man. Yeah, anyone that, can. Oh god! And I, that's, and that's I, I feel bad for any kid whose mom does that. I can't imagine. That's scary, like, man. Like, you imagine do, the bullying. Oh, I know. If the bullies find it, you're done for. You're set up for. You're setting up your kid for absolute misery. Oh I, god! Like, holy shit, man. That's. I don't know. Terrifying. Oh, I feel I feel sorry for those kids. You yeah. know, they had no choice in that happening nope. or whatnot. They just they have to suffer the consequences of actions they didn't even make. Crazy, dude. Yeah. Kids out there with moms with OnlyFans, let me know what they are. No, I'm kidding. I don't want to know. I don't care. Tell me. No. <laughs> no, but I seriously feel sorry for you guys. That's I feel. True. You know what it is? If <laughs> never mind. I'm not gonna go on that. I was gonna no, say. Don't I was bother. gonna say. I was gonna say like. It's just going to lead them to therapy. <laughs> That's it. I feel like those kids will genuinely need it. Not like roasting uh, or flaming like, you know, women who do that or have to do that and stuff like that. The kids will probably need it at some point. Yeah. Sad to say. Yeah. It's just. That's rough. It's rough. It's tough. It, it like, man, especially like even friends, they could just pull that card and like, you Oh, they will pull it on you too, and you bro. you can't even fight back, no. bro. It's over. Here's the thing, I, you know what the funny thing is when it comes to OnlyFans and stuff like that? I don't blame the women for doing it, dude. I don't blame them at all. 
if people don't like it, blame the consumers. They're the problems. Sure. It's not the women who produce the content. They produce it because it makes bank. Yep. E it's pretty much easy money at that point. There's you know? enough idiots out there who are willing to buy it. All so. desperate losers who are willing to pay for that stuff, you know? Uh, power to them. I'm not a fan. I couldn't care less. But uh, for them, it's just, it's their fault. It's the consumer's fault. Well, that's why it exists. So you can't really blame the women for that. Blame the losers who pay for it. That's it, guys. Uh, so yeah, Jacob needs to touch grass and probably could have saw less of his mom. Uh, Lou, uh, the goat. The absolute king of the group. The alpha male, as I would like to put it. All right? Bald, yet handsome. And very dangerous. Very dangerous. When necessary. Wasn't Danger his middle name? I think it was. Anyways, Lou was the best thing about this movie. I I'm telling you, man. Every time, like, Lou's just like, Lou's an asshole, all right? I love, every time the guy have films and they have like a friends group and they have the asshole, you know, like, even like Stifler. Oh, you know, Stifler. Stifler. Stifler's Stifler great. Lou. I like, I, just, I don't know why, but I love characters who are assholes, you know? And they don't do it to a point where it's like severely mean, where you're like, oh, that's kind of shitty. A little bit, but it's not that bad. No. But you're like, oh, but they're funny. You know, they kind of get it like a pass, the asshole pass. If you're funny, you can be an asshole. True. That's it. You just have to be really funny and you can be an asshole at times. 100%. You know, people will let it slide. You know, it was like, even, it's weird because like, I make the correlation to Stifler in, in like, in an American Pie because, you know, like, they say like, that's our dick while Lou is their asshole. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. kind of similar thing like that. They're self-aware that he's an asshole, but, you know, it's cool. Mm-hmm kind of thing but yeah i just liked lou that was it it's just like the genuine love he had for his friends meant very again, very admirable very admirable and not like that but like even when him. he he stayed back he made sure that all of them were set up for success and happiness in their future lives they were well off the, yeah the ambitions and dreams came true it yeah. seems like he went and did his thing and then supported them afterwards yeah you know with lugal in the motley lou my God, Motley Lou. Motley Lou oh is God. sick, dude. That was funny as hell, oh man. Oh my that God, that was funny as hell. Wasn't there I, a quote like, "There's like, there's only two things that matter: Motley Crew and boobs, or something like that." That was it. That was a great quote. That was oh a great God, quote. Yeah. I feel like that's a motto everyone needs to live by. True. One hundred percent. You know, Motley Crew, boobs, ended there, guys. I no, think I, nothing I, else more. I think I said it at the ending of our film. You know, that's pretty much like the the Ten Commandments. That's eleven and twelve right there. Yeah. Motley Crue and boobs. Bam. Add it to the twelve Boom. commandments. We got something cooking there. We got something mean cooking. Yeah. I think that's it for about a uh, hot tub time machine. It was overall a really good film. Just like it because we're talking about it much longer than I thought we would. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's like, kind of crazy. I, it, you know, the weird thing is, I have so much more to say, but I think it's just like. I think we covered a lot I of the I think bases. we covered a lot of the bases. Because talking the about the it. movie, it's just like, I, I think it might be a little redundant. You already saw us react to the movie, all right? Yeah. You know we thought it was funny. I hope so, at least. Uh, so, yeah. We're done with Hot Tub Time Machine. Very funny movie. A lot better than we expected. Loved it. Yeah, it was right up our alley. The Patreon were right once more like they always are. Love you. We're going to move on to Kong Skull! Island. I'm gonna just like say it off the bat. That's you it, Kong heads out there. You Kong apologists. You guys lied to me. You, I'm, okay. you guys got so oh upset when God. we skipped this movie and went to Godzilla vs oh Kong. God. And literally, not a single element of this goddamn film led up to Kong vs Godzilla. And, and you guys got upset. No, you know what the thing is. You guys got so upset. You even insulted us for skipping it making it seem like we missed some important information that we could not see godzilla versus kong without this film i waited the entirety of kong skull island whatever that is that it kong skull island yeah call kong, where the god i don't care okay kong skull island i was waiting the whole film waiting for it just thinking what carries over to the next film let's yep. look at all the characters yeah all characters yep. are introduced yep. to any of them any of those assholes ever appear in Godzilla vs. Kong? No. Do any story elements appear in Godzilla vs. Kong? No! No. The only thing they name drop Hollow Earth once. Once! That's it. But other than that... Nothing. There was no point in watching this film in terms of seeing Godzilla vs. Kong. No. I could have never have seen Kong Skull Island. And I would have lived my life happy. All right, yeah. I would still be the same. Nothing would have I changed. I missed out on nothing. Nothing was missed out. Was it a phenomenal film? No. Was it a bad film? No. It was lukewarm. 
It was good. It was yeah, like it was it like was, it was an okay. It was all right. It was okay. It was okay. No, if I had to rate it, it would be like a six out of ten, maybe a five point five. Uh, you know what? No, it's a five out of ten, guys. I just thought of a scene in that film that pissed me off. Was so, it that? Was it the grenade scene? <sighs> That's gotta be one of the worst scenes I've ever seen. In the okay, film. I got. I just want to. Unless you. they did it purely with the no. intention of comedy. No, maybe. It could no, be good. no, they didn't. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. What? I don't know. First man. of all, first of all, it almost looked like the. It's like I told you while we were watching the film. It reminded me of the scene where Frodo and Sam, or like the hobbits, are being pulled back, and Gandalf is fighting the Balrog in the um, in the mines of Moria, the bridge of Casa Doom, or something like that. Right? It was kind of like that. There was slow mo. They're pulling back the soldiers, making and the guy just gets ripped against the goddamn mountain and blows up it was the lamest death ever it's supposed to be a self-sacrificing a great moment for the character and he yeah. just gets nullified didn't even matter it ends up being the funniest part of the entire film yeah why did you do that that was so not bad. even that but i thought of all the soldiers in that film he was the best character you killed him off in the most disrespectful yeah he actually stupid had, he way. had an actual interesting story about why he kept a certain gun yes and i really liked that i was like oh that's interesting and then they kind of like yeah, by the way, screw you, bro. You're gone. And they just, like, kill him off in the most dis disrespectful way. I was absolutely, like, I couldn't believe it when I saw that. I was like, you, well, yeah, that's the send-off? Yeah, because, like, it's so comically bad. It just, I just don't, I was thinking to myself, why did you do this? You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the butterfly effect with the granola bar. <laughs> it, I, I think it's on par. It's what? just, it, it kind of just takes you out of the film and just like it's dumb as shit yes it completely takes you out of the film and you're like wait what what's what am i watching what's yeah, happening that, here? that was weird it's a, it just ruins the pacing of the film it made me kind of like i don't know i didn't really like it i hated that and i also thought it was bizarre when the the scientist got they're like they're on the boat and they're like wee, we're on the boat scientist guy gets picked up by the little pterodactyls and flown away and gets pulled apart but it happens abruptly out of nowhere, nothing prepares you for it. It just happens to the point where it's all so funny. It's kind of funny. Like, Dude, it's not even just that, but like, it's like it also everyone's just like, oh, nothing we can do. No, uh, uh, oh, they're cool cares? with it. Get, whatever. Nobody cares almost. They're like, oh, well, that sucks. He did science and shit. He's not that useful. It, it kind of felt like they, they had too many characters and they did not know how to like get rid of them. So well, like, get the funny little bird guys to kill them. Well, like, not whatever. Even, not even that, but it was just like, what was the point in killing off these characters? It didn't serve a purpose to the film. It actually didn't. Their deaths served no purpose. No. It was very weird. You know, it's just like... It kind of felt like they just had to get rid of them. Pretty much. You know, it just felt like we have to get rid of these guys. We don't want them in the end. Just... Yeah. I'll have pterodactyls pick them up and fly them away. You know, whatever. Who gives a shit? Yeah. And I think another thing is this, like, what I really was kind of upset about was that, like, it has such an amazing cast. Oh. But I feel yes. like the cast kind of got, like really underused i well i feel like john c Riley hard carries the film when he as soon as he shows up the film just goes up by well, astronomical john numbers john c Riley, uh john, samuel jackson samuel, as well samuel jackson's That's really good scenes. in this john goodman john goodman really good in this but john goodman isn't in it that much he's there for the beginning and then he kind of like then they start showing off the other characters more when they get on the island yeah he gets, a, john, scene, he gets a scene explaining like about but, his past but as stuff. soon as they get on the island he's kind of like pulled away a bit yeah and then he's put back when they want to get him rid of him yeah like, okay uh, samuel jackson john c Riley were like the, like the highlights in terms of the, the yeah. human characters they were really good i liked yeah. them a lot they were fine uh tom hiddleston and brie larson were wasted i yeah they're it, good actors that yeah that's the thing it's they just are like, good actors it's just like it felt like their purpose was only to like maybe move the story ahead but there was like not enough depth to them or like no, that was a problem nothing there's nothing wrong with those actors the two of them are phenomenal they've done good work yeah but their characters sucked it felt like the characters that they were given weren't good they're good actors but their characters weren't good characters that was the problem it, it felt like it was just like an outline of a character they didn't really flesh them out there was no death to it no no death it was just like very here's a, here's very a shallow silhouette, here's a silhouette of a character and that's as good as you're gonna get you know? Again, I think it's just that I, the biggest problem with this film was too many characters as well. I mean, it was two hours. They had too many characters, and it wasn't enough to, de to develop any of them. No, and you know what? Really? Okay, I said it before in, the, in our like review. Oh, yeah, I know exactly Dude, what you're talking about. The yes. amount of scenes in this film that is literally just playing music and having random shit done, I was so annoyed. Like They were really trying to make this film two hours long. Yeah. I felt like they needed... It's very rare that I feel like movies need more time. They needed more time, and they wasted a lot of it by just doing little silly montages 
with great music playing over it. The music is great, sure, but, like, the amount of times they did it, it got really annoying quick. Yeah. Like, my God. Like, there's only... So oh, dude, it got on my nerves after a while. I was like, not another montage. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, like, yeah. overall, like, I actually did enjoy the movie, to be fair. Like, the, I, the movie... The, the Kong moments were cool as shit. Every time Kong is on the screen, it's 100% good. When he's blowing up the helicopters, oh. beating the shit out of them, throwing trees through them and stuff. Not only just that, but there were some amazing shots some of Kong. beautiful shots Such of good Kong shots. looking like a badass. Mm. The monsters look cool. Yeah, you know, the you skull have, crawler guys. The skull whatever. crawlers looked cool. They're badass. You also had, like, the big octopus. You had the... The big water buffalo bison thing. That yeah, that out. was cool. I like that. There's some cool shit there. You yeah. know, or the big stick bug kind Ooh. of thing. Ooh. 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 Oh, when okay. he shoves his foot down the guy's throat. The big boom. spider? Yeah, right through the guy's his bamboo legs. Sick. Right through that his throat. That was sick. Right through the throat. Straight up the ass. Bam. <laughs> that was sick as hell, man. And even though they're fighting it, some good moments. Some good moments. Yep. A lot of good moments. I didn't hate this film, guys. I know I really criticized the hell out of it because I feel like the comments overhyped it. Yeah. That was the problem. The Kong fights were great. The final fight was super cool when he took, like, the the engine of the... The, the propeller? The, the propeller. Whatnot. He was, like, whipping it around on a chain and stuff like that. That was super cool. You yeah. know? Lots of great moments. Everything with Kong? 10 out of 10. Perfect. The humans were horribly flawed. Again. Yeah. Horribly flawed. Great actors. But I think it is predominantly just too many characters. Too many. The I, one I, feel, I feel like they could have, like, dropped no. off the, quite a few the of them. The one character I hated the most was the one who kept writing a note to his son. Oh, the dude! That the, was uh, so painfully cringe. Uh, I dude, couldn't help the it. The whole dear Billy thing was so I cringe. I hated that. The, oh my god! Who cares about this guy? He doesn't do jack shit. He walks around and then dies in the lamest, most pathetic way possible. There was no payoff there. Like no. it just felt the whole. Thing they try to make you feel like, sorry for him, and you just don't give a shit. Like. Oh Very my point. god! Again, I couldn't get over that. Again, uh, it's just like it was too many characters and things going on. They could have easily simplified it a lot more and, and gave a better story and really developed characters who actually mattered. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I just oh I think god. they tried to make too many characters matter when they really didn't, and they shouldn't have. They should have not put any attention towards them. No, because again, like they had such a good cast. That whole entire, there's no excuse. Yeah, but the whole entire subplot of the guy writing the letter for his kid, he should have just died when the helicopter dropped and put more time between Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson to make their characters a little bit better. Yeah, that could have been time well used. Yeah, you know, because that whole entire subplot was useless and dog shit. I. I'm getting riled up thinking about it because I really didn't like it. I know. I thought it was dumb as shit. That was it. It's weird. If you... This movie... Possibly... It's hard, man. I don't know. It's 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 okay. All right? It's okay. It's, it's okay. It, it, it has great moments, but like... Anything with Kong and John C. Riley and Samuel oh, Jackson God. and John Goodman is good. Yeah, John C. Riley was so damn he good. He was really good. He was yeah, I, I truly believe that he carried a lot of this film. As soon as he showed up, man... I really felt like it started just doing because even better. that party with Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson with just them, something felt weird. But when John C. Riley joins that, that part's good. That group is good. Samuel Jackson with the other group, good. Because yeah. you have one person that's carrying the group and, yeah. and like, like pretty much making it interesting. Yeah. Right. But that was also the problem. Yeah. I, that, it was, only one character was really shining in their groups. In their groups, and it, it, it's just it became painfully obvious. And it's no blame to the actors. I don't blame the actors. I blame the people who wrote the characters, not the actors whatsoever. That, yeah, I don't blame them at all. Like it, you know, they, they really didn't have to bring that many characters into the story. They could have killed off far more during the helicopter scene, or during like the giant stick bug. They, they had many yeah. opportunities to kill off more. It's like even that guy who got carried away by the pterodactyls. Why didn't they just kill him off in the helicopter? We didn't yeah, need to see right? that. Like, I didn't really, like, I didn't, didn't really I didn't, serve a purpose at any point. He, he was never important. He didn't help them at all, almost. He was useless. Yeah. Why was he here? I, I never understood that. He was just completely useless. Yeah. I don't know. That was very bizarre to me. It was. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Again, Kong good. Human's just weird. And, like, even at the end of the video, I think we've kind of rated the videos. I, I have to, like kind of correct it i think kong skull island's at the bottom of the kong list. skull island is definitely at the bottom because um, it's just the way it underutilized such a fantastic cast like i think the first godzilla underused its cast too but it was a far left brian cranston for 20 minutes was better than anything that this movie could have showed off in terms of humans yeah just sad as hell it's true Bri like brian cranston has that one scene where he's uh being interrogated and he just mentions how he his wife died no, he it's just like his the wife absolute like, like just like the the devastation yes. the the emotion yes. in his voice and everything yeah. 10 out of 10 and like that scene alone trumped 
every scene of the humans in this film. Yep, 100%. and I think that's just the point that makes me most upset. Yeah. I expected a little bit more from the humans, honestly, yeah. and because I felt like the humans in this one were a lot more likable. I felt like they could have done more with it, but yeah, I don't know. It just felt like it was really lazy and just messy and all over the place. Ah, what a shame, honestly. Yeah. But again, anything with Kong was ten out of ten. They yeah. did Kong justice like, here. When he stepped on the on the octopus and started eating him, sick as hell. I dig yeah. that shit. Kong was cool. Kong was cool. The humans, uh, in some parts, were good, just underutilized. And you know what the thing is? The they, potential was there. There's so much potential, and they wasted it. The execution wasn't there. No. That was the sad reality. No. Um, but yeah. So the, the, it was definitely... Because like, like, there's so many cool and amazing scenes, but man, I just can't stop... There's just some things that made me really feel fed up. I think yeah. that scene where the guy gets slammed into the mountain, as funny as it is, for a movie like that, it served no purpose, and it kind of... It didn't make any sense. No, nah, it, like, it totally took me out of the film, and I was like, "Are you serious?" It was. It, I was like, "Who really?" It was just because this the moment idea. felt like it was very serious. You know, the slow mo pulling them back and stuff. It felt like a very serious and heartfelt moment. Like this, you know, their 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 fellow comrade is going to get you know he's going to sacrifice himself. This is a big moment, and he doesn't do anything. And they just insult him. They literally make fun of him and just whip him away and blows him up. Like we've cracked out laughing because it's so shit. I just I. Oh I, God! I, and I was genuinely shocked it happened. I, I was like, I couldn't believe this happens. Like, no, nothing prepared me for that. All right, I just horrible. I don't know why they put that in the film. I don't know what asshole thought that was a good idea, but it was a terrible idea. Please never do it again. I was like, are they trying to just tell us, oh, the creature's smart? I don't know. They, if you uh, did it for comedic effect, maybe, like, maybe, a, maybe a cinematic masterpiece. You know what you're doing, and you are a god amongst men. Now, if you did that. With no purpose or intent whatsoever, of I hate comedy. You. I hate you. If it wasn't yeah. for comedy, I hate you. That's <laughs> it. All right. It was bad. It uh, was terrible. I'll, I'll be honest, man. Like I, I have some scenes in films that I have like on a list. I'll like, never forget that. I got like my top five scenes that are just like so horrible, and like it's there. Plus, oh. like I said, we're <laughs> part of another movie. Granola bar scenes there. Yeah, too. granola bar scene. Yeah. But granola bar scene is funny. Yeah. I think I love granola bars. But it scene. takes you out of the moment entirely. Oh, it it's, does. It's the same thing. It's a terrible thing. Like the it timing makes... and everything, like again, it's a tense situation. It's a serious conversation. And bro, like it just it's, it's funny as shit. It's awkward as hell. But oh my granola God. bar scene's my favorite unusual scene that doesn't make sense in a film. I, I can't get over how great that is. Masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Absolutely great. It's so terrible, it's good. <laughs> yep. I'd say the same for this one because I laughed so. It was damn really hard. funny. It was really it was, funny. It was, I'll be honest, it was funny. Shit. But for like the the, the the way the movie was up, the way they were trying to present the scene, just no. The way they presented the scene, the way they were presenting the movie as a whole, this didn't make sense. It was just like, I didn't quite, I didn't quite get it. No. But I liked it. I, I, think, I liked it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, but I was happy at the end that John C. Riley's character got to go home. Yeah, you got the that was nice beautiful. He got his beer. He got his hot dog. And he's watching the game, and that that was a beautiful ending. I love that they did and it's, that. You know what's interesting too? After watching Kong Skull Island, it made me realize like, wow, in Godzilla versus Kong, they made Kong way better and more interesting. The whole sign language with the little girl. I was waiting for her. Oh no, I was waiting for any element of potential sign language use. Like, to kind of, like, lead even to that. foreshadow and lead forwards yeah, I wanted it. to know, how the hell did Kong go from Skull Island to the Truman Show? Yeah, like, I, re like, I really There's... wish they gave it some kind of, like, indication of how it, ha I thought, it happened. I thought, like, everyone in the comments like, oh, you have to watch Kong Skull Island. Because I thought we missed something. I thought we missed something and it would explain why he's in the Truman and Show all of a sudden. explain shit. But I got no explanation. I just, I, I just, like, I was just, I, the movie ends and it's just, like, why? Like, why did I have to watch that? And, like, the only thing you get is the ending hinting at, like, Mothra, Ghidorah, and Ronan. But, like, bro, that the movies are already out. I look at the cover of the film, I know who's in it. Like, yeah. that doesn't serve me any so purpose. It doesn't serve any purpose ending. either. Yeah. You know? But so, uh, I don't know. I, God. So, for the Kong apologists and the Kong heads... You're uh, wrong. We're, we're, you guys were wrong. We didn't have to see this movie to enjoy no. Godzilla vs. Kong. No. Because the Kong we got in Kong Skull Island... Wasn't interesting, but he was very cool in yeah. terms of like kicking ass and stuff like that and protecting the people. Very cool. Yeah, you know, I was... like that whole concept that he was like a protector and kind of like Godzilla he... is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of protects the peace and stuff. Yeah, that's fine. That was cool. But other than that, nothing else. I think you Kong know? and Kong vs. Godzilla is a far better character. Way better. Kong is better More in that film. They made him interesting. The whole dynamic with the little girl in the sign language made it. So... It was just. They made Kong an actual character at that point, yeah. which was nice. Giving him that level of communication and that, intelligence. That, and death? Yeah. Mm, that was good. It. So, I don't know, guys. Uh, you guys were wrong. Sad to say, we were right. You were wrong. Yeah. Sad to say it.
Not a bad movie, not a good movie. Just nope. okay. It was okay at best. Um, so yeah. I enjoyed gonna, it for the most part, so whatever. Enjoyed it for the most part. And we're going to move on to the final film of the week. The Last Boy Scout. This is, in my opinion, Bruce Willis's best work I've ever seen in my life. And I'm heavily biased by it. There's a little foreshadowing at the very beginning of this um, podcast where I said I like characters who are assholes. Oh, boy. Ooh. And, 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 mm, 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 mm. Mm. and, and Joe, Joe's an asshole. All right. You know Bruce what I love the most, though? Mm. He's an asshole to himself as well. He's an asshole to everyone. He's not even safe from himself. Nope. All right. Nope. What was it? He starts his day. Oh, I love that. Nobody likes you. Everybody hates you. You're going to lose. I. Right uh, there, that's my guy. That's it, That's man. my guy. That was it. Every time Bruce Willis opens his mouth in this film, funny, pure comedy gold. It's comedy gold. How is this even an act? I went and looked at the, 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 the genres of the film. Action sports. Where's comedy? I laughed at this film more than I've laughed at actual comedy films. Yeah. It just didn't make sense to me. Bruce Willis is just the way he delivered his lines is perfection. Oh, he 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 embodied the character so perfectly. That was it. He had so many good lines. Not even that, but even like uh, Damon Wayans, he had some funny ass lines in this too. Dude, even his daughter. As Jimmy Dix. His daughter though. His. Oh, yeah. She was the a child. Oh, she was for, so for good. For a child actress, wow, she was really good in this film. Yeah. Whoa. You know, just like said some mean things i thought if that was my daughter i would feel crushed yeah like holy shit like as a father man like as a, oh my god as a father man, i wouldn't be able to recover from that <laughs> i would need therapy asap like she learned from dad very well very well what was the thing when she was talking about um she was talking about her uncle and uh and then all of a sudden joe's like oh you know your uncle made mistakes blah 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 and stuff like that and she's like you know um but you know why he never got caught because i helped him and she's like yeah he never got caught because he didn't make mistakes Oh, like, <laughs> uh, say they called him a, a, uh, I can't use the F word because YouTube is like I called him an F up. Yeah, and, that and that's why I'm trying to. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. trying to make it. I more, know you're trying to more YouTube friendly. Yeah, you know. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you. So he's not a mess up. You know, and I was just yeah. like that. I don't know why, but I I felt like secondhand heartbreak. Yeah, like oh my that, god, that was cold. A kid say, oh my god, oh man. Yeah. Man, it's like you thought, you, kid, it's like her kid calling you a failure, right? You, that is you some thought harsh that shit. you thought Joe's been through like uh, some harsh times, you know, with his wife cheating on him with his best friend or friend. I don't know what the hell that guy associate, was. I guess associate, right? Cheated on him with that his was associate. Wild. That was pretty. Low. Oh, I love the fact that as soon as he gets in the car, he blows up and dies. Up, that was so yes. funny. When his oh my when god, he dies or instantly gets in the car, boom, explodes. I was like, thank God, we don't need him in here anymore. Yeah, but even then, you know, thought you thought that was the worst. But no, that scene with what his kid, what his daughter t says to him, man, that hurts. You can't come back from that one. No, no, you just divorce your wife. You can't divorce your child. <laughs> divorce your child. No, disown. You can disown your children. Nah, uh, not as easily, man. Not as easily. They have to do a lot more than that. Even then, it's just like I would have to live with like a heartbreak there. It's just like yeah. I'll never forget those words. True. You know, they would live on with me. But I don't know. Everything about this film was just great. Cool. I, I, I was at no point, like. Not entertained, bored at all. No, it's. I was just looking forward to every scene. Of what, what's what's Joe gonna say next? What, yeah, what, what kind of silly shit? And especially when he's like being taken by the guy. He's gonna like kill him in the in the alleyway, and he's just talking about screwing his mother and stuff. Yeah, he's like, oh, he was like making some like yo mama jokes and stuff yeah, like that. Classic. Just, I just like that. Like he, you can literally. What I like about the character is like he's so cool and badass, and he has no care for his own self worth or his, like of his own life. It's because he's genuinely depressed. Yeah, you know so. It's not like he's doing it because he's cool. He's doing it because it's not good that he's doing it. The reason why he's doing it. Because he truly believes he has no... There's, he does not value himself or his own life. Yeah. To that extent, wherever he's in a situation that means life or death, he he's, he can handle it perfectly. Why? Because if he dies, it's okay. That's it. It's kind of crazy. I, yeah. That's the thing. It's he, just part of the he job. He portrays it so well. Yeah. I like that a lot. You know? It's very believable. That's it. I, mean, I even like how, he, for some reason, it's just like Joe's apparently like an X Men. Like he has superhuman strength for some reason. Every time like some bad guy's like, Ugh, and Joe just like, boom, clocks him, one shots him, hits him on the floor, and just kills him. Instant kill. Instant kills him. The guy hit him like two, three times. It's like when he was next to the pool, right? Just killed the guy, one shot, bang, just like that. Oh man. Broke it. He broke his nose and shattered it, shattered it through his skull and stuff or something like that. It's like, dude, 
You got to hit someone real hard to do that. Right? And real. you got two free hits on Joe. And Joe just punched you once and literally killed you. Your bone shrap he, the shrapnel of your nose punctured and killed you he, right into your brain. He didn't even knock you out. He killed you. Dude, that was wild. That was wild. Yep. And I like how I just said, touch me again. I'm going to kill you. Yes. And he lived up. He always it. meant that. He always meant that. Yep. I like how throughout the movie, you're just thinking about who's the antagonist. And then boom, they introduce evil European once more. Bro, Classic. Dude, back in the days, dude, creating a villain was so easy. They're just like, they take a dart. They look at Europe. They throw it. Boom. It hits a country in Europe. And they're like, all right, that's our villain. That's where he's from. That's where he's from. That's how we do it. Yeah. Another evil European. Let's go. I respect it. Mm -hmm. I, I truly do. I think evil Europeans are a great stereotype villain for films. Yeah. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> Europeans or evil Europeans? Evil Europeans. Evil Europeans. Right, uh, just I, gotta... I, I love Europe. Don't worry. We got... But yeah, well, we love Europe. Don't worry about but it. But I love the fact that how this guy died too. He literally... Oh my yeah. God! Yeah, yeah, bro. The he gets helicopter caught. propeller. Yeah, and okay. Then, and then after Joe hits him with like a Fortnite. Bro, he hits dance. him with a, dude, he hits him like with a half-ass gritty kind of jig thing, man. Woo! Yep. yep. That was like the original Fortnite emote. Yep. Joe literally kills him, and then Fortnite emotes on him. Like, Absolutely wow! Incredible. Is that where they got it from? Did they watch the last Boy Scout? They're like, that's what we need in our game. <laughs> we need people. To we dance when they kill people. Yes, we gotta make people get upset. There's nothing more disrespectful than dancing after killing another person and having them watch you. Yep. Yep. That's it. But again, wait, okay, when the helicopter was flying around and stuff like that, I was thinking, oh, evil bad guy falls off, he hits the ground. All right, typical evil bad guy kind of way to go out. Dude, they, they had the balls. All right, they had the balls to send him through the propeller yep. and make him into a meaty mist. Yep. I loved that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was thinking, how does this movie get any better? Boom, it gets better. Not even that. Big bad guy, the guy who owns the the, the the big Texan dude who owns the football team, they're just like, what do we do with this guy? He blows himself up. Yo! He blow, I, dude, he literally blows his entire house He up. blows up his entire house, his dogs as well, and himself. <laughs> I oh. love that. Just like, due to his own greed and stupidity, yeah, he blows I, himself I just up. I have two scenes I really want to talk about. Bo, shoot. One is the uh, using the cat puppet gun. Oh my that god. That was hilarious. And the other one is just the foreshadow where uh, Jimmy earlier makes a joke about how, uh, you know, uh, they're st uh, going to start stealing horses instead of cars. And then near the end of the film, he literally steals a horse. Yeah. To like. Jimmy steals a horse yeah. just so he can like it, throw the football and get the, what was the it? The guy team? out of the way, the sniper shot. Yeah. yeah. I, it was just like, the, a lot of the foreshadowing was so clever. Very interesting foreshadowing. It was funny yeah. as shit, dude. What I thought was really it, it was very wild. It's like they introduced you uh, to Jimmy and his girlfriend there. I can't remember her name. I just know it's Halle Berry. I know it's Halle. I know her. We know it's Halle Berry. All right. Woo! All right. <laughs> Woo! We know. And so they introduced you to her and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then just like ten minutes later, bang! She's gone. I was like, what? That fast? Yeah. No build up. No lead up to it. We're no. just gonna blast her into oblivion. Dead. Crazy man. I was just like, I thought she. I just thought she got wrecked so soon. I wasn't expecting that. You thought there'd be a little bit more of her, at least. I thought it would. They would have let you know the you know the, the stew kind of simmer on the nah, pot and the pan. They were the pretty stuff. dedicated. They're like, nah, this is a buddy. we gotta get This rid is of a quick. buddy cop film. Yeah, the buddy cop film. We gotta get her. We need her out of here. There's no buddy cop plus three unless you're watching Leave the Weapon. Other than that, no, it doesn't work. No, no. it doesn't. You gotta get her out of here. And she was gone. Yep. Bat. Bat. And she was out of here. Well, bat, 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 and like from all all around in circles. Like, when she got pat, when the, the car pat or like hit her or something like that, she got out of the car like, ah! why would you get out of your car? Never do that. Why would you Never do that? Never do that. Never, Never get out of your car. All right, uh, you don't know what asshole has just hit you. Yeah. All right? Honestly, if, if someone's willing to hit your car like that. He might have hit you. And what if he walks out and starts blaming you? Yeah. Bro, I'm yeah. out of there. You don't deal with stupid people in that way. You mm -hmm. just really don't. Go get out of your car. No. Rookie mistake. Be, be, be safe. Stay inside. Stay inside. Be safe. You know? Yeah. Let them argue outside. Let them have their fun. Yeah. Let them cool down a little bit. Yeah. Don't just go it. out there because if, 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 if they strapped, brrr, you're gone. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Let that be a lesson to you guys. Yeah. Uh, words of wisdom. Okay, hold on. Okay, guys. We have to talk about... I In all my life of reacting to films, all right? We've, we've watched a lot of movies on this channel. 400 plus, all right? We're at like a badge of honor. 
Not really. Almost like uh, I've suffered a lot. I've been through a lot. And never in my life have I ever been absolutely bewildered, surprised, or shocked when I saw the guy run out on the football field and pulls out a gun and starts blasting the dudes. Running, oh, my God. Going for the touchdown Dude. and just blasting them. Yes. He takes, like, he takes, he, shit. He takes like, some PCP or something like that out of the locker rooms. And I saw, oh... Well, I didn't know it was PCP. I was like, oh, he's taking something like some kind of enhancers of sorts. You know, he's going to he's gonna get fired up. Like, he's going to really, he, he's going to win this game. You know, he's going to go for it. But he pulls, he starts running for the touchdown, starts blasting people. Nothing prepared me for that. I've never seen something so just like out Again, of left field. It's like one of the most wildest intros for a film. No way did I have it in my mind that he was going to run it down the field for a touchdown and shoot three guys in his path. That and is going to be the And then himself, thing. it says, Life's a bitch. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> click clack boom Dude, himself. I the fact that he even said that as well. Life's a bitch. Click clack. Yeah. Again, Good. I don't think I've ever seen a movie that surprised me to that extent. And we've watched a lot of films of suspense, you know, yeah. mystery and whatnot. And every single one of them, I was just like, oh, okay, that's ooh surprise. This one's like, whoa! You know, that shit's insane. It was truly a surprise. Yeah. You, <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams could I have ever thought that that would happen in a film. No. I. What a touchdown, man. Yeah. What a touchdown. I, I, one that will never be forgotten, that's for sure. No, I'm telling you, they, they're going to have that one replaying for months. I don't think they're going to be replaying that one. Not at all. No. <laughs> oh, my God. I just thought something so mean. What? I thought something so mean. Say it. I, want, I, I just feel like, you know, I feel like if that happened in real life, you know, it'd be a, a terrible thing, right? I guarantee you there's going to be some asshole in the future who will probably get a touchdown. He would get the touchdown, throw the ball to the ground, get on his knees, and rig. Air gun himself in the head like a reenactment just to think he's cool or try to yeah, kind of get some like horrible publicity, but you know, it's still publicity. I feel like someone would try to do that to be meta or kind of like I bet they'll see this on TikTok, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably hoping it gets viral. Whether Dude, it's someone, good or bad. someone should do that, you, you know what I mean? Right someone now, would do that, right? Somebody in the NFL should literally do it, just run and hit the touchdown, boom, get on their knees, last a bitch, <laughs> and like pop himself. <laughs> Not, not, like, not, like, like, not literally, but with no. like an air kind of like... Yeah, it's like, oh, and he hits the ground. It's yeah. like, what a touchdown. What, you know what I would be like? The last Boy Scout! <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. You know that would right be there. a crazy reference. Well, everybody else in the in the stands and stuff like that, and oh, the, like, the audience would be like, what the hell did we just watch? What's going on here? <laughs> they'll, be so, like, they'll be so terrified. <laughs> they'll, like, yeah. That, well, why'd he do this? Yeah, why are you doing this? <laughs> what does this mean? You know, for the people who have not seen The Last Boy yeah. Scout. Honestly, if you're in the NFL, please do it. <laughs> Please that'll, do it. That will literally make my entire year. Please, and before you hit it, just say, this is for Octocrawl. And then get on your knees and, and proceed. What's <laughs> a bitch? Yeah. Pow! Just. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be the wildest reference to make? <laughs> like, wow. I guarantee you they can't do it, man. They wouldn't allow it on TV, man. I guarantee the guy. Come will, on! I guarantee the guy will have the camera. Like, oh! You know, like swing it fast or like touch hey, the camera. You know what quick. the best part is? Mm. Everyone in the stadium that gets to watch it. Oh, probably someone's gonna like have it recording on their phone. Anyways. Oh yeah, it's yeah, gonna be it's, great. It's, yeah, they'll probably. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna see it. Yeah, we'll probably see it. I hope so, man. Please, someone Just, make yeah. the reference. One of you NFL players. Yeah, make, make the, the reference. Make the reference. Do it for the love of God. Do it at the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Wow! The, that's the moment. Whoa! That would be insane, dude. A last Boy Scout reference at the Super Bowl? Oh, man. <laughs> okay. I would actually watch. Yeah, I'd watch it. Yeah. If, uh, if yeah. I knew that was going down, I'm tuning in. I'm tuning in. I man. literally don't care if you do it at the last minute. I'm, I'm going to be watching I got to see time. that reference, man. I want to see like yeah. the little air the little air gun and everything. All right. You know what? We're just going to get the questions. We're, we're going too long on this idea. <laughs> Guys, okay, guys, we're absolute morons. All right? we're, we're joking. We're, Please do it. We're, 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 Please do it. We're clowns, all right? We're comedy clowns. We're a little hee-hee-ha-ha, -ha, guys. We think it would be hilarious if someone did that, you know, if they just made the reference. I guarantee you they would probably get thrown off the team, maybe. Or We don't know the repercussions for you, but if you actually do it, you know. You have our eternal respect. You would get a gold star. So if you want a gold star, that's how you do it. Uh, we're going to move on from this. Uh, question time! Question time, guys. Uh, enough Woo! of us being idiots. Woo! 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 all right so there wasn't that many questions asked i beg i plead i get on my knees and say you know please give me questions and sometimes you guys don't answer so i chose some people asking us multiple questions so enjoy go on read them all right so first couple actually there's a couple of questions here yes sir so we're, we're gonna 
jump right into it. Yes, sir. John Campbell, yes, sir. 756. Mm -hmm. I saw you did a reaction channel with another reactor on their channel. Shout out to Timothy Reacts. Yo, Timothy Reacts. We love you. We see you. We see you. We love you. Any plans on further collaboration? No! Uh, probably not. I'm going to be honest. Other than Timothy, no one has ever really gone out of their way. Well, there was a, another group of people, actually. And uh, Oh, it just didn't go through. I, I just couldn't make the time, sadly. I'm not going to say any names. No, we're not going to say any names. Happen. Sadly, just like, timing was shit. Just never got back to them. Sorry. I'm an asshole. But uh, generally speaking, a lot of people do do not t talk to us. Yeah. No, nobody really talks to us. Nobody tries to interact with us. Nobody even asks us to collab. No. We're in our, we're kind of in our own world. We're in our own world, and to be fair, I think we're like... I think we're too stupid. I think we're too weird. Yeah, I think we're too, like, we're too boisterous, loud, stupid, clowny. You know, maybe it's a little too much. Maybe it's a little intimidating. <laughs> You know, and you're gonna scare them all the time, man. Yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, let's see the next question he asked us. Maybe, but I highly doubt it. Maybe. Uh, next question: Fish, friends, or food? Food. One hundred percent. They are food. They're but food. Fish can be friends. They can be friends. You can get your nice yourself a nice little aquarium full of shrimps or something. You know. Shrimps. I say food, but it depends on the fish. I tried friends, but the fish I had as a kid all died too quickly. Ooh, seems like a skill issue. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> WandaVision, Loki, and Miss Marvel were great shows. I do not ag agree because I've never seen them, so I don't have an opinion. Yeah, I, I think I watched Loki. I thought it was okay the first season. I never saw season two. Miss Marvel, WandaVision, nah, didn't watch. I don't know. I, I didn't really like a lot of the Marvel shows, and I stopped watching them. I have no interest. Uh, I worked on the press kit for Finding Nemo film and DVD. Oh, Good job, good job. At it's least it was movie. for a good movie. Good job. Yeah, it was for a good movie, man. Good job, good job. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the Studio Ghibli Miyazaki animated films? Do not attempt to react to them. We've done Spirit Away, and it was a big mistake. We tried reacting to it. We put it up on the channel. We got yeah. a big copyright strike on that. It, it was You'll really... never see them here. No, we, we decided to watch them in our own times now, because like realistically speaking, it's just we can't do it. Yeah, so I've actually recently watched two uh, Ghibli films. I mean, I watched it with my girlfriend. All right, went over to her place. Girlfriend. Girlfriend, the girlfriend, the girlfriend. Love you very much, boo. I love you. Eee! And so I watched uh, Howl's Movie Castle and Princess Mononoke, I think it's called. Yeah. Oh, my God. Phenomenal films. Phenomenal films, it's especially Princess Mononoke. The mm. protagonist for that film is one of the best protagonists I've ever seen in a film. He's just, he's too cool and responsible. That's it. Great character, great films. I love them. Uh, Howl's Moving Castle is a very moving film. Very moving, very romantic. It's very, it's a beautiful film. Ghibli slaps, all right. Ghibli slaps. True. I want to see it. the the boy and the heron. I still want to see that. I still want to see that. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna watch it at some point with her as well. So eventually, I'll watch it by myself. <laughs> Terminally alone. Um. Okay, I think that's it for Mr. John Campbell seven five six. We're gonna move on to the next question. Woo! All right, and it's our favorite, Ayudia Cassia. Cast a spell. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, and they had the four flexing Goro arms. Nice, nice. Yep. Odd fingers, even arms. We out here, baby. All right, first one. Would you stack on top of each other for next Halloween as Goro? And who would be on the top? There's no way Curtis is holding me on top of shoulders. I'm going to be honest with you. I will yeah. kill Curtis. No, I'm going to be honest with you guys, all right? Chris would have to be the top. You would have to be the top half of Goro because Goro's got a big chest, wide back. Chris has to go on top, all right? He's bigger. Right? So we have to represent Goro properly. He's got thinner legs. He's got thinner legs. Unfortunately, I have thinner legs. So I am going to have to be Goro's bottom half. And not just that, I also have a massive dog. It would be very in tune with Goro. <laughs> so we're going to have to do it like that, guys. Yeah. Not the answer you're looking for, but the answer you need. All right. Uh, what do you think of durian? Never tried it, I think. A durian. I don't know. It's a spiky fruit, right? It looks like the... It's like yellowy and it spiky. It looks like the, the Gordos from Kirby, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't really think... I don't know. I don't know if I would eat them, but I would like to throw them at someone. I'd be open to trying it. I don't care. Oh. Yeah, I would be open to trying to eat it and throw it at someone. Yeah. Have you watched Power Rangers, the TV shows? If so, which seasons have you that, that you've watched we've watched a lot of power rangers especially i remember when kyle would come down and visit us we would, we would stay do, up to like two in the morning watching power uh, rangers we would pull all-nighters watching power rangers i remember dino force a lot with the, <laughs> when they have the dinosaurs yep. kind of forms and stuff yep. i remember the og power rangers some of those themes absolutely slap hard as hell dude yep. some good ass theme songs mm. uh but yeah i've seen a lot of the power rangers i can't name them all specifically because it's been a long time but we've watched a lot when we were kids um, what is the most underrated usage of maple syrup in your opinion? Probably maple syrup and eggs. 
Scrambled eggs and maple syrup yeah. goes hard. It sounds weird as hell. It's a very Quebecois thing, I think. Or maybe in some other places they do it as well, but I know a lot of people do it here. Yeah, it, it, it slaps. And it's actually better than it sounds. Yeah. You know, it sounds a little bizarre, but try it out at home, guys. It's not that bad. It's pretty good. Not bad at all. Give yeah. it a shot, please. And let's see. Thank you so much for everything you have done on this channel, including and beyond chanting my name so beautifully, Curtis. You're welcome. I hope our interactions in Octopods would pull more people in and other better things to come. Better things are to come. We have a lot of plans. We have a lot of plans. Better things are to come. You are a seer of sorts. Thank you. Thank you, Farseer Ayudia Cassia. Thank you. All right. Move we on. love you. All right. Next question comes from Cross Camel. Cross Camel. Cross Camel. Cross Camel. And he's got the four flexing Goro arms. Sick. I All love right. it when they listen to me. They want us to rank certain fighters. Yep. Jackie Chan, Van Dam, Jet Li, Steven Seagal, and his prime Bruce Lee. Did he have a prime? And Chuck Norris. Oh, that's a, oh, sorry, that's a weird question to ask. Did uh, he even have a prime? <laughs> yeah. Whoops. All right, so I'm going to go out in terms of heavy biased. Uh, I put Jackie Chan number Jackie one. Jackie Chan is number one. Uh, I'm going to put Van Dam is number two. Because I've seen a lot of Jackie Chan films, and I've seen... I've recently are seen... Are we talking about who I like, or are we talking about who could actually fight? Yeah, who could no, actually like, kick ass. Cause if no, it's in terms of being fun to watch. Oh, okay. okay. Jackie Chan, 100% number, number one. Jackie Chan has the best choreography. Okay. Jackie Chan, Van Damme... Um, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Jet Li. Jet Li. Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal. It'll go in that order. I, I think Seagal... In any list, no dead one, last. no one beats Jackie Chan in terms of enjoyment. You can't. Yeah. The guy's like he's yeah. literally in a league of his own. It's like a god amongst men. It's yeah. not even fair to put him in this list. No. And Van Dam, I like him. I am very biased. We've watched like Kickboxer. We watched Bloodsport. Um, Blood Sport. I really. We will do more Van Dam. We I will promise. do more Van Dam films. It's planned. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Jet Li films. I've not seen a lot of Bruce Lee films other than um, Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon. Yep. So. I can't give you a proper opinion on those guys. We've seen one Steven Seagal film that we did that's only on the Patreon right now. Yeah. It was a it was a funny film. It was a funny film cuz Steven Seagal is funny, not in a good way, but in a in a <laughs> 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 I've not seen a lot of Chuck Norris things other than what we've seen him in um Expendables 2, I think it was. Yeah. So I've not seen a lot of his own like standalone films back in the day that he did. I haven't seen a any of those no. so i have no opinion on him either so that's why my ranking is the way it is yeah um uh, but yeah so someday check out street fighter sunny chiba you'll love it it's been it's, we've been communicating we've been communicating it's been you'll see heavily thought about it might be coming Boop. next question boom Anthony Miel four three twenty. is this a stupid question is it a stupid question, Curtis? Yes! It's a stupid question. Congratulations, Anthony Meal, 4320. You win a prize. Not only did you ask a stupid question, but you too are stupid. No, I'm kidding, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I saw this. I was like, okay, this guy's pretty... He's a little clever kind of guy, you yeah, know? he's a goofy guy. He's a little goofball, you know? And I kind of liked it, so I kind of wanted just to put that out there. So uh, thanks, Anthony. I really liked that comment. It was pretty funny. Gave me a little chuckle when I read it. Uh, is that it? That's the final question? Yeah, that's the final question. That's, the, that's it. We're done. That's the final question. We're out, it we're turned on. out it was a stupid question. Woo! Thanks, Anthony. Uh, so, yeah, guys, that's the end of the Octopod. I'm glad that you guys stuck around to listen to us. Uh, remember, you have to ask us questions. Ask us questions. I feel like I'm begging. I'm going to start threatening you. Secret emoji. Secret emoji. Ah! Secret emoji time. All right, guys? It is... Milk bottle emoji! Whoa! Show me some milk! So. <laughs> it's milk emoji, guys. Just put some milk emojis in the questions you ask, and there's a better chance for me to see it, and we'll answer those questions. More Show me some milk! <laughs> I wish I could say that was intentional. It really wasn't. <laughs> you said it with such passion. I, I know, dude. Show me some milk. On that note, that's the end, guys. All yeah, right. We're peace and all. Milk and all, we're out of here. Yeah, we're, we'll milk it out of here. We're, uh, see you guys next time. Adios. All right.
Love you guys. Love you all. Stay milking. <laughs> <laughs>